this section is complex numbers. So one thing we've dealt with is we've had square roots of negative numbers. We haven't figured out what to do with them yet. We've just said they're not real. But what this is, is it's actually called an imaginary number. And so one way we can look at this is we can look at this as a square root of negative 1 times the square root of 9, which would be 3 times the square root of negative 1, because we know the square root of 9 is 3. And so what we do is we let i stand for this square root of negative 1. And so what this means is that when we have something like the square root of negative 9, we can just write that as 3 i. So now when we have the square root of negative 1 is i, to get i squared we could square both sides. Notice the square and the square root will cancel each other out. We're left with negative 1. So when we use these, we'll go ahead and simplify 24 like we did before. 12 and 2. So this is the square root of negative 1 times 2 squared times 2 times 3. Square root of negative 1 is i. Square root of 2 squared is 2. And we still are left with a 6. This one, square root of 81 is 9. Square root of the negative is i. Now on this one, we need to simplify each of these first. So this is 2i, and this second one is 5i. We need to get those i's taken care of first. And now we can multiply these together, get 10i squared. But we know from above that i squared is negative 1. So we'll have 10 times negative 1, or negative 10. We can also simplify powers of i that are greater than just i to the first or i to the second. And we'll use this, we'll do this using those um, identities that we know. So we have to think about how can we rewrite this using powers we know. And the powers we know are i to the first and i to the second. So if we have i to the fifth, we can rewrite this as i to the four plus one. And using our exponent rules, we can break it up like this. And then once again, using our exponent rules, i to the fourth is just i squared squared times i. Well, i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 times i is i. This one is the same idea. How can we break this up? We can break this up as 2 times 17, which means we can have i squared times 17. i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 to the 17th power is negative 1. Same idea here. This can be i squared and the 2 times 20, which means it's i squared to the 20th power. Negative 1 to the 20th power it's just one. Same thing here. Break this up. We can do this 50 plus 1, which means we'll have i to the 50th times i to the first. And now this i to the 50th can be i squared to the 25th power, because remember we'd multiply still times i on the outside. i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 to the 25th is negative 1. Negative 1 times i 
is negative i. A complex number is a number that we write in the form a plus bi. And so we're going to simplify these and write them in a, as a complex number in the correct form. So just like before when we had x's, you want to combine your like terms. So 3 minus 2 is 1. And negative 5 plus 7 is 2i. And notice we've got our number and then our i term. Over here, we might want to distribute this negative first. So we'd have a plus 2 plus 7i. So now we'd have 3 plus 2, which is 5. And then negative 5i plus 7i is plus 2i. Now when we mu multiply, you just distribute like we have been all year. So we distribute this 3i in, so we'll have 18i minus 12i squared. But we know i squared is negative 1. So we'll have 18i plus 12. But remember, we need the i to be second, so 12 plus 18i. Because when we write a complex number, we always have the i part second. This one we're going to distribute as always, so negative 6 plus 4i plus 9i minus 6i squared. Once again, remember ne i squared is negative 1. And on this last one, distributing. Out 41. Complex conjugates. It works the same way as our conjugates did before. If you have a plus to begin with, the conjugate's the negative, and vice versa. So when we rationalize, we're still going to multiply by the conjugate. And so now we'll multiply by 5 plus i over 5 plus i. So our numerator is easy, 5 plus i. Our denominator, when we distribute, we'll have 25 plus 5i minus 5i minus i squared. Just looking at our denominator, we'll have 25, these will cancel, minus negative 1, or 25 plus 1, which is 26. So we'll have 5 plus i over 26. And one way to write that in proper complex form is to break that up into the two fractions. So 5 over 26 plus i over 26. On this second one, multiply by the conjugate, which is 3i minus 8. So now our numerator is negative 6i plus 16. And when we distribute the denominator, And now, once again, I'm just going to look at this denominator. So these will go away. We'll have 9 times negative 1 minus 64, or negative 9. And so we're left with negative 6i plus 16 over negative 73. And when we break this up, we'll have 6i over 73, and then minus 16 over 73 because we'd have this negative here. But remember, we have to have the i second. So it would be negative 16 over 73 plus 6i over 73. And that is our complex numbers. When we talk about the absolute value of a complex number, we're going to be using this formula up here. So on this first one, we're going to have square root 
our a squared and our a is our first number, so in our case, 4. And then notice we add whatever that coefficient of i is and square it. Our coefficient of i is positive 6 squared. 4 squared is 16, plus 6 squared is 36. So I have square root of 52. 52 can be 2 and 26. So we're left with 2 root 13. On this one, our a is 1, so we'll have 1 squared plus, notice our b this time, there's that coefficient of negative 1. Square root of 1, squared 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. Square root of 2, can't do anything else. Last one, notice we can rewrite this as root, sorry, as absolute value of negative 3 plus 0i. So our a is negative 3, our b is 0, so I have a square root of 9, which is 3. But then notice, we could have just looked, well, what's the absolute value of negative 3? Well, we all know that's 3 from chapter 1. Notice, we get the same thing either way, so that's one way to show you that it works. So now we're going to go ahead and solve some more quadratic equations using our quadratic formula. So our a is 1, b is negative 2, c is 9. Notice we can simplify this 32, it's 8 times 4, so we'll have 4i root 2, don't forget your i because it was a negative 32, and we can divide everything by 2, so those coefficients, and this is what we're left with. Notice this one, we need it equal to 0. Square root of 8 is 2 root 2, but because of that negative, it'll be 2i root 2. Once again, divide the 2 from everything. On this one, let's go ahead and get rid of our fractions, multiply both sides by 6. Now, root 23 won't simplify, but we need to pull out that i. And then we'll just leave it at that. Last one. We could use our quadratic formula for this, or we can use the fact that we already have something squared equaling a number. So let's go ahead and get that squared, ter squared variable by itself. Let's divide both sides by this 5. Now we can go ahead and take the square root of both sides. Remember, when we take the square root of both sides, we have a plus or minus. And since we have the root of a negative, bring that out with an i, plus or minus root 6. And if you use the quadratic formula on this one, you would get the same thing.